Hello everyone, this is Sharu from the Web3 Passport and today I am joined by Jillian, Lisa and Graham on the occasion of Ethereum uh, conference today and uh, for our audience it's our first Web3 hackathon organized by eDublin team for the first time in Ireland. So Jillian, uh, Lisa and Graham are going to, we're going to talk to them about metaverse and the virtual tourism. So uh, Jillian, Lisa and Graham, you have just finished your panel on virtual tourism and metaverse. How did it go? What were the audience curious about to to find out after, you know, why in, during a panel? Uh, during a panel yeah it was a lovely panel we really enjoyed the audience interaction and we had a great time um, speaking about the metaverse and all the opportunities that come with the metaverse for the tourism industry so yeah we're we're happy with the feedback so far and we spoke about sustainability in the metaverse we spoke about dating in the metaverse <laughs> we spoke about building and creating in the metaverse so everything related to the metaverse very nice. And Lisa, while you're holding the mic, so I want to go deep, deep dive into your uh, journey into Metaverse. So you're currently uh, running orchards near me. And this project of yours is based on foraging and agriculture. And is your project related to Metaverse as well? So can you give some uh, light on your project? What are you doing in this space? I will. I am founder of Orchards Dream Year, which is a sustainable touring company. And I founded that five years ago, nearly five years ago now. Um, it's uh, about connecting people with local food and local ingredients. So I'm very passionate about sustainability. And it is one of the key reasons why I am involved in the Metaverse and Metaverse projects. Um, I also studied international tourism. So I have a master's in international tourism. And what I find is that we need to start asking more questions about why we travel so much and is there another way to travel and can we have different experiences rather than physical experiences. So I love the idea of learning through the metaverse, um, creating through the metaverse and experiencing virtual tours just as much as physical tours so we're not damaging our natural environments. Interesting, very valuable points being mentioned. So um, I have more questions for you on that. So mainly on the adoption of that, what trends are you seeing currently with uh, the adoption side? That are is there a deep big interest in the in the in the in the world to um, in this use case of travel in metaverse and you know different use cases? So we'll go back to that in a while. So I'll I'll move to uh, Jillian. Hello, so, great hi, to be here. Thank hello, you, Sheru. Julian. I am very admired and impressed by both these ladies. They are so incredible in their own uh, aspect, in their in their, in their own unique way. Julian, I am so so admired by you, like um, I am uh, with Lisa. So you have so many incredible, um, uh, you know, uh, achievements here. You are a, you're a chairperson for several projects and with various teams. So it's it's so challenging to name every project. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a Web3 advocate okay. and I'm a big advocate that's for women in Web3. Right. That's okay. really, and I'm a journalist and a broadcaster and author, Lovely. but that's what it boils down to. And yeah. you know, a long time ago, I was told mm. by somebody, and it's a very common expression, right. what you can see, you can be. So when right. I came into this space in Web3 about five, six years ago, I realized that I was important, not because I'm important, but because I'm a woman and I have a voice. And that's why, you, that's why I feature in loads of places because I'm always going around talking to people and interviewing people and, and just trying to show young women in particular that there is a space for them in Web3 because Web3 can be very bro dominated, you know, the, the men, the male culture. And I think it's so important for, for women in particular to see, oh, there's an old bird over there and she's doing something over there. Maybe I could too. So that's why I'm involved with so many things. It's it's interesting, yeah. uh, Gillian. And I was uh, flabbergasted and left amazed by all the awards, recognition and, you know, uh, you have received so far in this this whole career. Of, well, I'm of very privileged. I mean, yeah. and I'm not. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's an amazing thing to get an award, to get a recognition. Yeah. It is really, really powerful. And again, it's powerful because people can see me. And again, it's not me. It's a woman doing these things in this space. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to stand up, receive an award or participate in some award, well, be nominated, be shortlisted, whatever. So um, it's um, I do it not because I think I'm great. And I know I sound like rogue here now, whatever, but it is so important for women to step forward and not just in right. women's 
awards, yeah. like in general awards too as right. well. It's almost like saying that just show up and be there and uh, be be seen and amplify your voice and, uh, you know, uh, give that impression that, yes, you are there, you're interested in and you want to do it. Ha- yeah. Half the battle, I think, yeah. in life is showing up. Right. I really do think that because yeah. mm-hmm. we all go through life and we all have you know, terrible things and wonderful things that happen to us. But to keep on going is showing up. And, and and sometimes women are more reluctant to come forward. The Men tend to be better at faking it till you make it, whatever. And women tend to be, oh, no, I don't have the skill sets for that. So I think it's very important to show up and do your best. And I don't say fake it, but do your best. And um, I've had a great opportunity in Web3 to do that over the last five years. And I've traveled the world outside COVID, obviously. And I've chaired conferences and I've met amazing people. And it, it's just... It's a privilege to be in in this exciting, dynamic, but not so full of women sector. And right. I'm doing the, the not so much. Interesting. <laughs> very interesting, Gillian. And like as uh, similar to Lisa has uh, presented a very strong case for virtual tourism and metaverse. So what are your opinions about virtual tourism and metaverse? Where do you see it going? Oh, uh, well, I'm learning lots, right? Because Lisa was the one that introduced me recently with Graham too. Graham is very inspiring. And I think what I'm learning again, and we're learning together we're, as we're chatting and doing stuff. But I think the most, imp- not the most important thing, but it's the combination of the physical and the digital and it's creating an experience with the two of them and that's very exciting for me it's not just whether it's sustainability or you can't travel or you haven't got the money to travel or whatever you want to create a a combination of the two so if you're local or you're international you can still enjoy some of the most amazing places in the world and the digital aspect of that is is huge i'm very excited to say to be learning with graham and with lisa where we're learning together and it's just fantastic that's incredible. Wow, that's a good start of this conversation. <laughs> Graham, now I have a question for you. So when did your journey into Metaverse started and how did you start getting curious into it? And talk to us about the Metaverse book. Yeah, thank you. So I got into uh, Metaverse in basically in 2019, 2020. Uh, I started off as an enthusiast in what was being called at that time by Engine um, a multiverse. So it was more about the idea of collaboration within the same network to build something that goes cross-platform. And this interested me quite a lot. And then during the pandemic, we saw uh, Axie Infinity. And the one thing Axie Infinity did exceptionally well was create this idea of being able to be a social safety net in the Philippines that the government there were unable to do. And this made me think that there are industries that need that kind of extra economic push post-pandemic and need to pivot for technological reasons. And that brought me to to tourism and we set up the, the business in 2021. I would like to thank Sheru and thank Graham and Gillian, but the joys of mommyhood, I need to go and put my daughter to bed. So um, the next time I will, we will do another podcast in the metaverse Certainly. together I look forward to it. and we have another panel discussion yeah. and we all learn more about each other. Thank you Definitely. so much for having me, Sheru. Yes, lovely. It's, a, it's an honor to have met you today. I'm just so happy, so delighted to have met you and to have, you know, experience your energy, your aura, really. Trust me. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll, we'll meet each other again very soon. Graeme, you have just mentioned about the company that you have formed in 2021. So tell us more about the vision of your organi- company and where are you heading to? Yes, so uh, New Frontier is a digital engagement company for tourism, and we work on two fronts. The first one is with tourism attractions to work on digital transformation, and that could be anything from project managing an immersive space to be added to the attraction and then curating experiences around that that tell the story more about the exhibits and the purpose of the museum all the way through to rethinking things like panels and technology that's inside the the attraction itself. On the other level, we work with tourism bodies directly to uh, educate the attraction sector about Metaverse and what it does. And we as a business, alongside other businesses, are founding partners in two Metaverse platforms. The first one is Metinborough, which is going to be a digital cousin of the city of Edinburgh and used as a tourism gateway for Scotland as a country. And the second one is called the Mayaverse, which is going to do the same for Mexico. They're both very different in how they'll look, um, but the concepts around what we're trying to do with the platforms are very similar. Interesting. So I'm just curious to find out that how are we gaining 
feedback from the users or maybe potential say beta testing or exploratory phase how did we uh, how did we solidify the requirements of right this is what we are going to uh, make as an initial iteration and then we are continuing to evolve it so what that current process uh, looks like say maybe story mapping or um, yeah, so that's um, that's obviously a very key question. And what we've done is from day one is work with focus groups with local people. And the, the point of those is to work with different demographics. So that can be a business owner, that can be an attractions manager, that could be a local person of certain age groups. We've even had um, sc school children as part of that as well. And what we're really doing with the focus group is first of all focusing on what do they know about the metaverse already and making you know really clear what the metaverse is and isn't. There is still in the general public serious misconceptions about it. it. Yes. The, the idea that it was created by Mark Zuckerberg, I think he's done a really good job in the sense of remarketing Facebook as meta right. because people think metaverse must be an extension of, of meta. I see. Yeah. So that's the first conversation usually is, ah, oh, so you work for Zuckerberg then, do you? And, and so, yeah, so we do that. And then we also start looking at it from the point of view of what are your current goals and challenges? So at a regional level, that might be working towards Scotland has a, a strategy called Outlook 2030. A lot of countries do, which is about how you can develop sustainability, increase tourism, bring digital innovation into the, the economy. Um, and so part of it is around that side um, of the conversation. Um, and also what we're trying to do in those focus groups is work on not just you know what are you working towards the strategy but also what are your challenges now so taking conventional internet or taking real world visits what are your problems so we've had things that range from we want to change the demographics of the museum um, all the way through to for example in the case of mexico we have an opportunity with a high-speed rail link that's being created to link lots of different places together and we're trying to find creative ways of staying a world-class destination so those conversations then shape what we try to build so what we're trying to build is in the image of the community that it serves which i think is really important if we were to just build the platform and say come and use it i think we would miss a lot of the key points that come out of that kind of back work that happens and this will lead on to the playbook which we'll discuss shortly interesting now even from your ex uh, explaining about the project and giving us these depths of the project also triggers a lot of questions but uh, maybe i'll move on to uh, jillian for the moment uh, jillian um so you and lisa have form the first Irish pub experience in the metaverse. Tell us about that. This is so exciting. Well, it is. Thank yeah. you. It, it took us. Yeah. Uh, we had the idea maybe a year and a half ago or maybe even longer. And at that stage, because we're both journalists in Web3, we have the opportunity to meet a lot of founders of metaverses. So we were going around meeting people and sort of saying, do you fancy having your Irish pub in this, you know, your metaverse? And um, it turned out in the end, Sebastian Borges, who's one of the co-founders of Sandbox, I had interviewed him um, before, and then we met him in Lisbon, in Portugal, at NFC last year. And we had lunch with him. He was sponsoring the, concert and the, the conference, and we said, we have this great idea. And he got it straight away. And he went, yes, I would like to have the Irish pub in Sandbox. So that was a year ago. We he, there was a grant came from the Gamer Fund for the the studios in Brazil to actually build it, but it's it's our first iteration. It's very new. Um, it's it's there are things that are going to be changed in the second iteration because the sandbox sandbox sorry is still in beta, beta, and um, in September we have version two, and it's going to be a lot of extra stuff in there, and and it, it'll grow all the time. I mean that's that's the whole nice thing. It's a, a marker in the sand, and the reason why we wanted the Irish pub in the metaverse and to be the first one and we launched yeah. on Paddy's Day was because um, well we're both Irish and then we just thought you know an Irish pub is a really welcoming place and it, you, don't have, you don't have to be Irish to be in there in fact yes. many people who are not Irish go in yeah. there for the crack mm -hmm. and we just thought sometimes when you visit a metaverse it can be a bit lonely you know you kind of wander around going True. I don't own land here I don't, I don't have a shop here what am I doing here yeah. so we thought and this is, we're not there yet with our, our vision but I, we thought could we have 
a place where you come to a metaverse and where do you go to? The Irish pub, the Shabin, and you check out and you find out who's playing music, what events are on, you know, and it's 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 like a hub, a welcoming hub. Right. And you go in there and have a virtual pint or a virtual, I don't know, watch some sport or hear listen to music. Yeah. What uh, GAA? What GAA? <laughs> or it could be rugby. We're very big yeah. at rugby at the moment. So um, it's just it's just a place to go. So that was our, our yeah. concept, and we're we're building on it. Yes, this yeah. is so fantastic. And mm. you mentioned that uh, the first iteration was built in Brazil. The, the, sorry, the the uh, the design studios are designed based out of Brazil, uh, okay. who work very closely with Sandbox, and they work with the it's Box Edit, I think it's called the the platform that they're on. So um, they were very good, lovely. We, we spent a year working with them and uh, to produce amazing. this. So, and we're still we're still working yeah. with them for the next iteration. Right. And uh, it's going to get better and better. Yeah, mm. absolutely. With mm. iterations, it's going to get better and mm. better. And both the projects, and there is a huge opportunity and huge vision, and so they're going to be so impactful. Now, just talking about the Irish pub. Mm -hmm. um, so wherever I travel, I always look for an Irish pub, and I get it. So why not having a pub in yeah. Metaverse? It has to be. We have to fill up the gaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to. Sebastian Oh, we got with it one he, in technology. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, a lot of the other founders yeah. we spoke with as well, yeah. they all like the idea. Wow. Uh, we just haven't managed to build them yet. We're, we're, that, we're, on, a, we're yeah. on a mission. Yeah. And we will. We hope we won't have an Irish pub in every metaverse in the world. That's, That's our plan. That's so cool. That's yeah. so, so cool. Because as you said that, I've been to Decentraland. I tested Sandbox. But when you go around and have a tour of these mm. uh, places, you're on your own, just being so quiet. And... But yes, I will look forward to seeing that the impact yeah. this project is going to make. It'll take time, but it, yes. we're we're excited to be. I say we have yeah. a marker in the sand, yeah. the first one, mm -hmm. and that's that's a hard bit. Like you know, I said, keep showing up. That's sometimes it's the first marker in the sand. It's not perfect by mm -hmm. a long shot, but we we have high hopes for it. Right, wonderful, Graham. So about the metaverse playbook. So tell us about that. So how did that metaverse playbook originate? What's the concept behind it, and who should use it? And who are the current users? Maybe I asked so many questions in the go. <laughs> no, so um, we joined an organization early on in our business called Travel Tech for Scotland. And their job or their role as an organization is to promote the use of technology in tourism. And they're based at Edinburgh Futures Institute, Edinburgh University. So they were really there as a way of having a conversation about where the future of travel is going. And we, we attended a few events about future of travel and technology and the use of technology, whether the word metaverse was used or not, was one of the core themes, as was things like electric aircraft. There's a lot of futurist thinking comes out of that, which has been very useful for us. So the Association of Scottish Visitor Attractions and Travel Tech said to us, you know, you really would benefit the attraction sector by creating a resource that could help them understand the metaverse. And our approach as a company was always to approach attractions as a group with the support of the tourism body because it gives you a wider audience and more likely to find that innovator that, that really wants to, to move things forward. So th the playbook came from, as from a commission from them and the purpose of it is to take you through all of the steps that are needed to get started it takes you through the steps that would be involved in a project and it also gives you ideas for a KPI review and, and future steps. So it's everything from what is the metaverse really and what do we mean by NFTs all the way through to creating a framework for identifying challenges and opportunities in your attraction to utilize the technology. So it's a one-stop shop to support tourism get involved in metaverse built from a tourism perspective interesting very interesting and may i also ask you i'm curious to find out that after this virtual uh, tourism panel what were the audience curious about uh, were they curious to find out more about maybe they had questions on the projects that you are working on on metaverse so maybe the points that we haven't touched upon so i'm just um trying to understand um from that point of view that they the questions that we haven't covered yet or maybe uh, the questions on the gaps or the challenges were asked in the panel Yes, yeah, so certainly uh, in terms of audience interaction, there was questions around the how. 
So for things like, mm. you know, Mettenborough, which is effectively a digital twin of Edinburgh and Mayaverse as, as tourism gateways, that implies a lot of traffic. The, the implication is, is you're trying to encourage a lot of people to utilize the platforms that you're building. So some of the questions were around that and around, you know, how is it going to work yeah. in terms of the processing of, of the platform and right. what tools are you using to make that happen? Yeah. Um, and I think as well towards the end is when the marriage thing came in and that and that rather that maybe delay delayed or derailed some of the Q&A because we we started looking at you know the concept of marriage in the metaverse and the, you know the idea of whether a marriage in the metaverse is an extension of your real relationship or you're getting meta married to a different partner and your life in the virtual spaces with someone else Interesting. so so there was a wide and varied interest in in the in in the um, presentation for sure interesting yes so um i'm intrigued yes and especially the marriage concept <laughs> what do you think about you know when we are trying to go virtual um how will it impact the real life experience you know the real the life aspect have there been questions about that that we are so working towards metaverse yes that's wonderful great mm -hmm. technology and we need it because uh, to connect the world together and to be sustainable um, but when it comes to uh, like certain use cases, so are we disconnecting from human life or from the emotional aspect and going more virtual? I um, think it's probably a double-edged sword. Yeah. I think it's, if you maybe you remember that site, uh, Friends Re um, Reunited, it was pre-Facebook and it was a site that was set up by a husband and wife team. It was on the internet and it was when you went back to school, it's like a school book the number of affairs that blossomed with people who were 20 years on, they were married with kids, whatever, in a humdrum life. And then they went, the, went back and they met the boy or the girl that they had the, the fling with in sixth year. Anyway, it, it, the, the site eventually, I, I don't know how it came down, but it was, it was a bit scandalous at the time because, it, again, it reignited old love and old lust and all the rest of it. So it's an interesting thing. I, I hadn't actually realized there were, until Graham said it, that there were uh, like um, metaverse marriages happening. And it does beg the question, are you being faithful to your partner if you're marrying somebody else in the metaverse? Even if you've got a very different avatar, maybe maybe you're, you're trans, maybe you're blonde, maybe you're, you're a dog, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, 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 right. it, is, it does mm. raise questions for sure. Right. On the flip side, I was also saying towards the end of the panel, and I actually felt a bit emotional, if you're like maybe a granny and granddad and you're miles away from your grandchildren. That's right. And yeah. you obviously kids interact on video and stuff like that. But what if you, the child could bring you through their home, wherever it was, yes. and say, look here, that's, this is here. And they could interact and play a game of chess or do something that was a little bit, you know, in the metaverse. So it's just a bit different to, because kids get bored on Zoom. They don't talk to granny and granny on Zoom, you know, unless they're there with their sweets or whatever. So it, I just thought that's a nice thought. So I think it'll be interesting to see what, what people do, because people are infinitely, infinitely uh, varied in their approaches to life. Definitely, Julianne, and I think it all depends on the use case to use case. Yes, I would love that to happen because living away from my parents and uh, disconnected, it's uh, it's very hard on uh, when we immigrate. So, it's, so it will be a great um, you know transformation or a change in you know if we get that uh, mm. use case materialized at some stage in the near future. Right, interesting, mm. very interesting. Mm. And may I also reflect to, uh, ask you to reflect on the Block Leaders project? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes, for, thank you for bringing it up. That was formed in 2018. Um, I co-founded it with another friend of mine from the UK. And at the time, we wanted to write the story of all the leaders in this space because um, Web3 is full of entrepreneurs and founders. It's yeah. absolutely chock-a-block with people with great ideas. And people with great ideas make great interview subjects and also to understand why they're thinking, what are they doing, what is the innovation. So it, we, we thought, let's capture these stories. And uh, so it's been going since then. It's had a few little hiccups and up and down, whatever. And Lisa, who's here earlier, joined me um, as a partner in there too, as well as a journalist. So we do a bit more reporting as well. And Lisa loves to do academic research and sustainability. That's her thing. I like founder interviews. And um, it's given me a great pleasure because for two reasons, three reasons. One is that I get to interview founders. That's a great privilege because you don't always get to meet people as an ordinary punt, you know, punter. You can't go up and spend an hour with them. Even on Zoom, 
and ask them personal questions about their life, about their their passions, their hobbies, um, and their visions. So that's a gr- I love that. And secondly, it's enabled me to travel. So before COVID, I was traveling extensively all around the world, Middle East, and uh, I was in Asia, I was in um, America, Europe, chairing and moderating conferences because of Block Leaders, because I was the editor of Block Leaders, so I was invited to take on those roles. Again, to chair a conference is just phenomenal. It's a lot of hard work, but you get to meet everybody. And you have to concentrate very hard, of course. And the other nice thing is that they all remember you. You know, so they say, oh, yeah, you were chairing that conference. So if you want to go back again afterwards and say, could I interview you? Could I do something else? They say, oh, yeah, I do remember you. So it's a great uh, bonus. And then I just love writing. I just I love writing and I love doing founder interviews. That's my big passion. So I'm delighted to be, you know, working with block leaders and doing all those interviews. And I've done some greats like I, the late John McAfee. I interviewed him, Dan Topscott, who's very popular. Um, I used to include Alex Mashinsky in my, my proud boast, but not so much now with the Celsius debacle. Um, but I've interviewed a lot of different people, and some of them very famous, some of them less so. Um, but all interesting in doing, I mean, it, they're not your average commoner gardener plumber, if you like, you know, I mean, nothing to do with plumbers, but these people have these great ideas. So I just love being able to, and they're also, they're, they're hugely clever and smart and inspired and passionate, and it's just, it's a privilege. So I love doing that. You were in Mexico just recently, and was it, how do you define the uh, metaverse space in Mexico, or what took you there? Yeah, so um, essentially with with Mexico, the, the project that we're doing now, which is Mayaverse, which is building a replica of the the Mayan cities that used to exist in Mesoamerica times and using that as a as a gateway for tourism really came about because as as uh, Gillian says you're you're able to um, use things you've done in the past to get access and get opportunities in the future so it so happened that um, I was able to share a, a speech I did at the Scottish National Tourism Conference with the with the tourism authority in Mexico, and they thought, well, let's talk because we're looking at how we can develop Mexico as a world class tourism destination going forward, twenty thirty twenty forty. So it's a good time to have a conversation. So it kind of just happened, but really, where I think it's been a good fit in terms of not simply just being somewhere else to work in, is that there are there are themes that emanate through the worlds we're we're building and indeed we talked about them in in the in the session. And that's around the the whole idea of culture and history and preserving it. You know, we were talking about, for example, Holocaust survivors being turned into holograms so that you can ask them direct questions just like a school child would do today to a real person and the hologram will replace the survivors once they you know sadly have departed so things like that bringing things back to life you know recreating Tenochtitlan which is Mexico City and Mesoamerica times with its canals it used to be like Venice It, it is it's a very different place now still amazing in different ways but the, the old Tenochtitlan and the story behind, you know, the, the people settled where an eagle sat on a rock with um, a snake in its mouth perched next to a cactus, which is on the Mexican flag. And that's the story in how Mexico City was, was formed. So there's so much you can bring back from, from the past utilizing new technologies. And I think the other thing that's key it's that whole f- idea of digital and the idea of making sure that whatever you build virtually has unique and meaningful connections to the real world. And that's where we're looking, for example, with uh, Mettenborough at how we can you know, genuinely create an economy for Edinburgh that's digital in Mettenborough, but that both sit side by side. And whether you start out visiting Edinburgh and things you do pull you to Mettenborough or you're in Mettenborough having a virtual event or finding out about the country before you visit um, and then you utilize that information to pull you to visit we think both have a lot of validity in fact there's been some research done one of one of my partners in Mettenborough 
His company has investigated footfall after a virtual experience. So does going somewhere in the virtual world affect going in the real world? Do you basically say, well, I've been to Machu Picchu and in VR, yeah. I don't need to go in the real world. Right. But in fact, it actually increases footfall up to threefold, according to data. So it's quite fascinating. You'd think it would be counterintuitive. But in fact, it, it actually is a springboard. And this is where we've got this this vision of an economy for the places that we build with. Um, and in Mexico, they're actually building a high-speed railway around the area of Mexico we're partnered with. And this is stopping off very close to a lot of the Mayan cities. So as well as the, the Mayaverse itself as a gateway, as a place to go and see events and learn about Mexico, there's also the, per the possibility of utilizing that to have, say, a trail. And that could be AR experiences or that could be simply scanning a QR and getting an NFT. But then that NFT has authentic use, both virtually and physically. Now, whether that's access to an event, whether that's um, you know, extending your experience of Mexico once you've left, there's lots of different ways you can take something. And, and from a Scottish context, let's say William Wallace's sword, you pick that up having visited a battle site. Well, then what you can do with that token afterwards, there's so many ways you can you can take that in terms of curated experiences in the real world. If you've got the sword, therefore, on your tour, your your digital experiences will be tailored around the fact you've got that NFT, for example. There's so many ways you can take it. Um, and so, yeah, there's there's, a, there's so much to, to say in so little time. Literally so much to say in a lot of time. And this whole conversation is uh, it's so thought provoking. And there is so much that's already happening, uh, which I was completely unaware of before uh, this uh, chat that we are having now i'm um, i'm intrigued i'm i'm i have a lot of more my own research to do on what's going on in this space because a lot of information just came new to me and i'm just flabbergasted to know about these projects and and so much opportunity in this space digital and metaverse use cases i'm it's it's amazing. Thank you, uh, Graham, and thank you, Gillian and Talisa as thank well, you. Uh, to share your projects and all these deep insights with us. And it has given me a very good background to do my own research and to work on building my own uh, knowledge on what's going on and so many possibilities that we have and how um, this whole technology, this whole space, can be used in a very you know in an amazing way. I mean, right. one of the reasons yeah. we've come together actually mm -hmm. and the the team that's building Metinboro actually met at an innovation yeah. event as mm -hmm. well but one of the reasons we've come together is although there's some amazing things going on and in, in, in the Shabin is a, a brilliant example of that mm -hmm. um, there aren't that many of us yet you know we're the only ones in the um, in the tourist trade that are trade okay. registered for metaverse in the UK. Interesting. Um, so okay. there's not a lot of companies doing this and those that are involved in tourism in the metaverse mm -hmm. tend to focus on one thing. So whether right. that's NFT ticketing yeah. or um, it could be revolutionizing memberships or monetizing rooms, you know, particular popular rooms in hotels no one is actually looking at it as an ecosystem, as an ecosystem. end to end. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's that's been one of the, the interesting things for us is that we share a lot of common ground. Um, and But there are so few of us doing it so far. Interesting. Right. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. thank you so much. And um, yes, I am. I, as, as I said that it's a very thought provoking conversation and truly enlightening. And uh, I have soaked in a lot of information. I'm sure that this uh, chat uh, with you today is going to be so informative for a lot of people listening to us. Thank you, Graham for, and Julian, uh, for sharing uh, light you. on this uh, area. And I'm sure there is a lot more that will be discovered. And there is a lot that's being will be discovered and then in in the short period of time or maybe in the near future and uh, that will bring back uh, bring all of us back to have another conversation that where we are at what's going on how have we progressed and and what's up next definitely <laughs>